Hi, welcome to the Invision tutorial video for our CFDNA extraction kit, product number K61003. First, let's get acquainted with our reagents. First is our proteinase K and our proteinase K buffer, 20% SDS, lysis buffer, paramagnetic CFDNA capture beads, 100% IPA, wash buffer, our delicious 75% ethanol, and finally, our elution buffer. Now since we'll be working with plasma, I should get changed. Now, first thing we'll need to do is clarify our plasma samples. Centrifuge down at 12,000 G for 5 minutes to remove any cellular debris or precipitate. You'll also want to have a water bath set to 60 degrees Celsius. Now, let's prepare our reagents. Now, while I'm adding the proteinase K buffer to my pre-measured proteinase K powder, I should note that while this tutorial video is being done for a 500 microliter plasma sample, it is quite standard to scale up and do higher volume extractions of 2, 5, or even 10 milliliters of plasma. Now vortex thoroughly, uh, yeah, vortex really thoroughly to dissolve, and set aside. For the wash buffer, calculate the quantity you'll need and add 450 microliters of isopropanol for every 550 microliters of wash buffer. The wash buffer is quite viscous, it's got kind of a syrupy consistency, so don't let that surprise you. Be sure to make a fresh batch of wash buffer for each experiment. Now I should add that if any of your reagents have precipitate, such as the lysis buffer or SDS, just place your vessels in the water bath until the precipitate dissolves. As usual, vortex thoroughly and set aside. Now with reagent prep finished, let's start processing our samples. Awesome! The first thing we need to do is choose the appropriately sized vessel for the amount of sample you wish to process. A rule of thumb I like to go by is to use a tube that's three times larger than the amount of plasma you'll be using. Since this demo will be showing how to process 500 microliters of plasma, a standard 1.5ml Eppendorf tube is more than enough. Now the first thing I'm doing here is adding 7.5 microliters of our proteinase K to the bottom of the tube. Now, here is our plasma again. And uh, remember, it's been centrifuged to remove any particulates and it's ready to go. Add 500 microliters of plasma to the tube. Seal the tube. And vortex. Now we're going to do the SDS. I'm sure you've noticed that at 20% concentration, the SDS is likely to have precipitated into a solid at room temperature. Just immerse your SDS into a water bath to dissolve the solids and make sure it's well mixed before use. Add 25 microliters, and once again, vortex. Finally, we're going to add our lysis buffer, taken fresh from our water bath and mixed to ensure a homogeneous solution. Add 237.5 microliters of the lysis buffer. And overall, these reagents will serve to denature and break down the proteins in our plasma sample. There we go. Now, as usual, vortex thoroughly. Now immerse your tube in the water bath and allow it to incubate for 30 minutes. Once the 30 minutes are done, take it out. Awesome! The plasma sample has been processed and is now ready to be incubated with the beads. Now, vortex the beads thoroughly to resuspend them. Then pop open your tubes and add 35 microliters of beads to the processed plasma. You'll want to give the beads a few flicks to resuspend them somewhat. Now that the beads have been incorporated into the plasma, add 600 microliters of 100% isopropyl alcohol to precipitate the CFDNA onto the beads. There we go. Now pop your tube closed, and we're going to give it a quick vortex before placing the tube into a dedicated shaker that'll keep the beads suspended in solution for a good 45 minutes. There we go, the old shake a shake up. 45 minutes later, we are done. 
Now that the bees have finished ink bathing, it helps to give the tube a quick centrifuge to draw the solution down from the cap. Now you don't need to spin it for too long, we're not trying to pellet the beads. Instead, to do that, we'll be using the Invegion Magnetic Rack, which can hold up to 16 sample tubes. Now if you don't have an Invegion Magnetic Rack, an off-the-shelf Neodymium Magnet can work too. It'll just be a little bit more awkward. So we'll insert the uh, tube, and over the course of 2-3 to three minutes, the beads will begin to pellet. Just wait patiently, and let it do its thing. Alright, there we go. Now the CFDNA we're trying to harvest has now been bound to the beads, so all we have to do is remove and discard the supernatant. Be sure to leave the tube in the magnetic rack or attach it to a neodymium magnet to help keep the bead pellet in place during this process. To clean the beads, we'll first be rinsing them with the wash buffer plus isopropyl alcohol mixture we made at the beginning of this process. For a 500 microliter plasma extraction, we'll be using 200 microliters of wash buffer. Once the wash buffer has been added, we'll want to vortex thoroughly to resuspend the beads. And as before, centrifuge down and pellet the nanoparticles on our magnetic rack. Now that the beads have been pelleted, once again we'll be removing the supernatant, uh, nice and carefully. And we'll be uh, adding our ethanol wash, 75% ethanol, 200 microliters total. Once that's been added, vortex the tube to resuspend the pellets if possible, sometimes the beads will cling to the sidewalls of the vessel, and uh, magnetize once again. Now we'll be doing this two times total because there's going to be a uh, two ethanol washes to make sure the beads are nice and clean. Once the last ethanol wash has been removed, we're going to leave the beads to dry off to allow the ethanol to evaporate. It should only take about two to three minutes. Now. Finally, we're going to resuspend the beads in our elution buffer. For 500 microliter extraction, uh, I'm going to just use 16 microliters of elution buffer. Just add elution, the elution buffer to the tube, and you know, after leaving it for a minute or two for the CFDNA to elute off the nanoparticles, we're going to vortex. and then magnetize once again. This time, the supernatant is going to be enriched with our CFDNA. All you'll need to do now is pipette off the elution buffer, and you now have your CFDNA extract. Well that has been the Invegion CFDNA Extraction Tutorial, thank you so much for watching.